Eagle fans yet again are in an uproar because Avante Maddox is back. Howie Roseman is not changing his philosophy. Why are we bringing him back? It's a waste of time. But guys, we have to realize that since he was signed so late, it can only mean one thing. And Jordan Malad just got a monster t- contract and a ex- big extension. Very happy for him. Where he gets all that. The Eagles are not done at cornerback. Not by a long shot. Yo, yeah, what's going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. So, yes, Avante Maddox signs a one-year deal, and Eagle fans are not really happy about it too much. And trust me, I'm not really surprised over this, but I think the fastest answer I can give you is that he's not starting right now. You don't sign a guy this late for him to come in and say, ah, you know what, let's just sign Avante Maddox. It's easy. We don't got to draft a corner this year. No. I mean, I think 100% that the Eagles, Howie Roseman, the coaching staff in general, Vic Fangio, I think they like what they have in that room. There's no doubt about it. I think they like on the back end with Tyler Hall, okay, and Zach McPherson, and having Keely Ringo, Eli Ricks, and the rest of those guys. They have Rodgers coming to the mix. I think there is... I, I could tell from how they do talk about this cornerback group that they are very comfortable with that group, and I think they they really want to expand on it. I think all they could do is really add more strength to it. Uh, the Howie Roseman is still keeping a youth movement within this defense, within this roster in general. Okay, bringing Avante Maddox back on a cheap, 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 cheap deal is only telling me one thing, that he's going to have to fight for his roster spot this year or have to you know, accept the fact that he's going to be a backup. I'm sorry for Avante Maddox, but he has been hurt way too many times. And when he is healthy, my God, he is one of the most underrated nickel corners that we've ever seen. Okay? So, this doesn't stop the Eagles. Okay? And I'm just going to say this because a lot of people are thinking that he's just going to start. I don't think so. I think the Eagles are going to make him fight for his job because I'm sorry, but this doesn't stop them from getting Cooper DeJean in the building. Because I think the value here is Cooper DeGene and what he could do as a hybrid player. He could play inside. He could play outside. He could move around. And I think they value him more than a lot of these other cornerbacks. If they they don't have an outside corner coming into this draft, they'll get an inside guy. Cooper DeGene could do that. If they don't have an inside guy, they want an outside guy. Cooper DeGene could do that. So his pro day is April 8th. We're going to find out after that broken fibula and how his body is. And didn't do actually much at the combine, obviously. So this will be the first time we're where we actually see him doing things and uh, see how his testing goes. Okay, I know Jalen Carter didn't have Jalen Carter didn't have the best of testing, you know, last year, and everybody was all worried. And you know, and I get it. You know, I, I understand all of that. But you know, these are just to try to get the draft stock up a little bit because I feel like the Eagles feel like, and it wouldn't surprise me if they move back in this draft to get Cooper DeGene and get some more picks. At the same time, because I don't think Cooper DeGene is going to be a top 10, top 15 pick. He might not even be a mid-round, first-round pick at this point. And the Eagles, I I think, are at the perfect spot for Cooper DeGene because he can move around. The more hybrid guys you have in this defense, the better it's going to be for the future because then, you know, then, you know, we used to just have Malcolm Jenkins in the back, you know, uh, filling up and bandaging up this defense and not exposed, not letting it expose our defense and our secondary. And we haven't had the best corners even our Super Bowl year where we didn't really have the best corners, but as a defense and what our defensive line, everything works out for a specific reason with pressure and coverage sacks. So it all works hand in hand. So I feel like I feel like Cooper DeGene is that guy that they do want because of his versatility. You have Chauncey Gardner Johnson with versatility. You have Sidney Brown that could be coming back. We'll get into another day about that news. Um, good news on Sidney Brown going forward, and he could come back and play multiple positions. The more guys that can move around in your defense, the better it's going to be. Like I said, more value these players are going to have. Um, so, and not even just that, but. Like I said, I talked about the roster. Isaiah Rogers coming back, okay? And he was one of the top corner. He was a, he was a good cornerback a couple years ago, okay? And a kick return specialist. So you're getting you're getting a good player out of him too. And they could maybe put him on the inside because he doesn't mind playing on the inside at all, but has been more of an outside cornerback. But watch out. 
for Tyler Hall coming in because this man is looking for playing time. This man is one of the top-rated cornerbacks at nickel because he is a pure nickel. He's played more on the inside than the outside, but he is another hybrid player that can play inside, outside, safety. You know, Maddox only has one position. One, he can only play in one spot. You know what I mean? Um, you know, when we drafted him, I think McLeod was here. He played safety for a little bit. I think it was the only time he really changed positions. Uh, but with Tyler Hall... Um, is almost in a Bryce Huff situation where he's not getting the snaps that he wants. But every time he's in games, he's good, consistently good. And his his ratings are up, his statistics are up because he doesn't play a full season. So if you're more successful with less snaps, uh, less snaps, the, your, your, your statistics are going to look really good going into these seasons. Um, even a couple years ago, he was the third highest, I think was the third highest ranked corner. Um, I think nickel corner in the league, but you know, getting more opportunity for snaps, which he hasn't gotten. Tyler Hall could be a low risk, high reward top, you know, type move. So Eagles are getting a lot of, and what I've noticed about this off season, which I'm not surprised. Okay. Eagles are getting bodies, but they're getting bodies that have a lot of flash. And you have a young cornerback group right now. That whole group is pretty damn young. Who's the oldest corner right now besides Slay and Bradbury? I mean, it's, you know, Maddox would probably be the, I think Maddox would be the oldest guy so far. You know what I mean? So, you know, in the next couple of years, at least going into next year, 25, you're going to have to find a guy soon. And to get this job done early, go get your number one guy. And your number one guy could be the hybrid guy that moves around this defense. Okay. And that's Cooper DeGean. And I don't think this is going to, this doesn't tell me that Maddox is going to start the first day. This is telling me that he's going to have to fight for his spot. And if he makes the roster, which he can, if he makes the roster, then he'll be pure, purely a backup for this team. And he's going to have to accept that. I think Maddox knows what position he's in right now. I think the Eagles know what they're doing right now when it comes to this position. They know why Matt Maddox has not, just hasn't been available. Unfortunately, when we need him the most, and especially last year, you lost Maddox. You lost Zach McPherson that I was actually really excited for. And he was a fourth-round pick from Texas Tech. And he was going into the, you know last season you know, as the backup corner. And he had you know, nickel corner. And actually, I was pretty excited for him to get some playing time and show what he's gotten you know how how he's been doing the last few years couple years so I think everybody needs to chill on this and not make a big deal about it I think people need to be more relaxed people need to be more insightful say look this is just a competition Maddox knows he's gonna have to fight and if Maddox gets hurt you have options now you're not stuck. You're not putting Bradbury on the inside. You're not putting Eli Ricks and Keely Ringo on the inside. You actually have options because you are bringing in more nickel corners. And I don't think it ends even with Cooper DeGene. They could bring a mid-round, another mid-round guy. I know they've had some interest in some other guys too. I saw some other names, you know, some mid-round picks. I forgot their names, but they're going to have interest in other guys too in this draft. Add more competition in camp. So the more competition, the better it's going to be. And Maddox... Has a law as a as a high mountain to, to climb right now when it comes to that. So that's all I gotta say on Maddox. This is a good thing. This isn't bad to have him come here on a cheap one year deal. And if he gets hurt, boom, kick him out the door. Waste of a roster spot. He will not stay here on IR or pup list. He is out the door. He will be gone. He will be finished, gone, because. We have way too many other positions we need depth on right now. He's the least important if he gets hurt. The least important. Because I really want to see what these other guys could do. This is a year where we have to find out what we have. Because I think going into 25, you know, Slay's going to be gone. Bradbury potentially could be gone. We'll see what happens. His cap number is a little bit higher next year. Not, not too crazy, but, you know. The Eagles are keeping Bradbury. The Eagles are keeping Slay. And Avante Maddox, unfortunately, I just don't think he's going to fit the mold here anymore. So we'll see. I think it's a good move. A high reward move if he stays healthy. And if not, he gets kicked out the door. And that's really it. So, second on the list, which this has actually happened during the stream I did yesterday. Jordan Milano gets a monster deal. So it looks like the agreement on a three-year $66 million extension includes $48 million guaranteed and a $20 million signing bonus per source. 
per sources. The deal ties Milan to Philadelphia through the 2028 season. The $22 million per year average puts him behind Laramie Tunsil, Trent Williams, and Andrew Thomas amongst the NFL highest paid offensive tackles. And honestly, guys, his contract is actually not that bad. $48 million fully guaranteed. And, and that's it's kind of a low price. It's not, not that high. Fourth highest paid offensive tackle, which is great. The blind side of Jalen Hurts, which is the most expensive. Okay? So you re-sign Landon Dickerson. That left side is locked down for the next four to five years, which is great. Next four years. Um, which is awesome, and now you get Jordan Mulata locked up. So your left side is is perfectly done right now and um, deserves it. Jeff Stoutland, seventh-round pick, rugby player, never played NFL football, and this is one of the best stories that I think anybody can li- listen to as of right now. I think this is going to become one of the best stories, the biggest stories in Philadelphia Eagles history, but in NFL history too because, you know, these guys getting opportunities – playing a different sport, I think it was easier for Jeff Stallon to mold Jordan Mulata coming from rugby to the NFL because when you get a guy from college, he's used to playing a certain position. And then you have to try to, I think it's hard to mold a guy that came from a college team at a different position than they're playing into another side or the opposite side, then grabbing a guy that's never played the sport and you can mold him to that one spot you really want him. In the last few years, before he got his, his big start a couple years ago, Okay, Jordan Mulata was, you know, always, you know, he was on the fake IR. The Eagles always protected him on practice squad because they knew that there was something in him. And finally, he got his chance. And Jordan Mulata has been just one of the biggest stories, Uh, the biggest, most successful stories, I would have to say, for the Philadelphia Eagles. But that one man in Jeff Stallon is the main reason why. I I mean, seriously, who would have thought, you know, who would have thought the Eagles were looking for a left tackle for a while after Jason Peters left and, you know, Andre Diller didn't work out. I mean, it, it, they, they, they gave this a chance with a seventh round pick and, and look what's going on now. Highway 68, you know, because he's running right at you and uh, really happy. But Eagle fans are more upset now because <laughs> where's Devontae Smith's contract? God damn it. <laughs> Everybody's so mad. They're like, I want Devontae Smith to get signed. Oh, my God, they're not signing him. What's going on? Everybody's flipping out. Everybody needs to chill. Now, with this Mulata move, it looks like the Eagles do save a little over $2 million in cap space, which is good. Get more money. You're over $32 million already or 31 to $32 million as of right now because the 14.5 from Reddick will count for 25 offseason. So, nice big chunk right there. And now... Um, this is the year where, uh, you know, you're locking up some players for the future, which is good. Locking up some guys, getting everybody ready, prepared to go into this draft, get things set. Uh, Devontae Smith will get his contract. The Eagles save a little bit of money out of this, which is good. And um, that is it. That is the news. So you got two signings for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, a signing with Devontae Max to a one-year deal and an extension for Jordan Mulata. So, Eagles have made what? How many moves? Not. I'm just saying in general, 19 moves, including resigns. I mean, the Eagles have done a lot this offseason. Howie Roseman has been busy. We're not even done yet, and I would feel like after the draft, we're not done yet either. So we'll see what happens. Let me know what you guys think about the Avante Maddox signing. Do you think he is starting? Do you think he's not? Do you think this is just a you know? Let's see what he could do. But we're going to be relying on these young corners to get some things done here. Or, you know, Jordan Mulata, how do you feel about the extension? Are you worried about Devontae Smith not getting a big contract? I, and like I said, I'm saying this from the heart. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it. It's going to happen. We're locking up Devontae Smith, okay? I promise you 100% it's going to happen. If it doesn't, trust me, they'll they'll pay for it, okay? But I'm saying from the, the heart out, he will be resigned. Not worry about it at all. And uh, let's let's have a good draft. We'll see what happens. But you guys enjoy the rest of your day. If you guys have it, subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel for more Eagles news every single day. And make sure you like the video. It does help the video. It does help the channel a lot. Sorry. I can't talk tonight. You guys have a fantastic day. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Shake some up. Follow us on. Peace out, guys. Peace.